Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I will be talking about a game between AT and Sock and Tari. I think that's how you pronounce his name, Sock, or is it Saki? I don't want to offend anybody, but Saki, Sock, <laughs> AT and Sock is spawning as the Protoss player at the upper right hand position, and Tari is spawning at the lower left hand corner as as Terran. Both te these players are relatively well known and they have played very few matches together but this is a match that is very interesting. I think from what I've heard from my viewers that we will be seeing some potentially mothership action. Hmm, if that doesn't pique your interest I don't know what will. Right now the Protoss player has built one pylon and he's sending his f basically almost first probe out. I mean you can scout when you have six probes at the very beginning again, you send one out instead of sending one later, but this is a relatively early scout. We see a supply depot going down blocking off the front entrance for Tari. The Protoss probe will be entering the Terran base relatively soon and he sends two SCVs to deal with this one probe. This one probe's like, oh, there goes my shield. You've depleted my shield. Now I must run until it recovers and I will go right back. This is a very common tactic for Protoss players because the shield does regenerate relatively quickly. So if you engage a drone or an SCV, you can run away for a while. You will recharge quicker than they can. Well, actually, the SCV doesn't actually regenerate health or recharge shield. So you can recharge and then go and engage once again. And that's what this probe is doing. A refinery, as long as well as a another refinery no this is called simulator and refinery going up for each player getting gas 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 as well as barracks and gateway pretty standard so far ATN Sock tried to get this one SCV with a couple of probes but he's unsuccessful and this one probe is pretty much been alive and harassing the entire game very menacing always to deal with just one probe cybernetics core going down for the Protoss player the Terran player has not gotten enough gas for a factory just yet but he's probably getting one marine maybe orbital command going down second assimilator going down no second refinery just yet and he's completing the block off with an additional supply depot this SCV is chilling at this tower this probe is gonna spot him and this SCV knows that that does not bowl well for him and he's running away from the probe with fully regenerated shield these got two guys have met before but neither of them has gotten a kill just just yet. The SCV does not want to engage because he knows that's too micro intensive for him to do so. And there's no advantage. This is probably going to check out the entrance of the Terran player. One stalker was chrono boosted and warp gate technology is being researched. This one probe is getting in. He will see a tech lab and he hits the tech lab and a marauder takes one shot at the probe. This probe is still alive. Gotten a lot of information for 50 minerals. This SCV finally goes down to one stalker. One marine's coming out for the Terran player, Tari. And oh, he puts down a bunker. He knows he doesn't have that many units, so this bunker will help the survivability of his soon to be marine and his current marauder and also extends their range by one so it's very good to get bunkers two gateways going up for the Protoss player AT and Sock and what a key scan wow this is really good timing by the, ter the Terran player he will catch the glimpse of these two gateways going down as I was saying earlier about the bunker a second marine coming out probably going to get in the bunker as well the bunkers are basically free for a Terran because you can get a hundred minerals back so you invest 100 minerals now, you get 100 minerals back later. 100%, not profit, but 100%, you know, you get your investment. 0% gain. And we see at this time a phoenix is coming out. Ooh, very interesting. If you guys take a note at the actual star gate, if you look closely, you can see the outline of a phoenix is right there, right above my cursor here. So if you are a any player on the opposing team and you actually see the star gate, you can see what units they're making. Well, enough of the watching the Stargate as the Phoenix is coming out. Concussive shells are being researched along with Siege Tech and Vikings coming out. This is the basic 1-1-1 one, one, one build, 1 barracks, 1 factory, and 1 starport. This Phoenix comes in, see if he he's just scouting right now, he doesn't have a buddy along with him. He These Phoenixes can pick up units, but 
if he picks up a unit, who's going to shoot it? <laughs> That's why Phoenixes always need to come in pairs, unless they're just scouting, of course, which is the main pur purpose of this Phoenix right now, unless he gets a Phoenix buddy relatively soon. Siege tank's probably going to siege up when, once he gets the siege tech. As I was saying, 111 build very, very versatile, as you can pretty much build almost any unit from these three buildings. Two Phoenixes coming out, a third Phoenix coming out, this could get interesting very fast. Two Phoenixes come out on the side, and they pick up this one SCV that's building a supply depot. Very, very good play. Picks up a mule. Mule's actually worth more than SCV because over their lifetime you can coll collect around 200 minerals, and they should be killed before the SCVs if their lifespan is a little bit longer. I mean, more than a four for the way, basically. Up oh, and the Viking snipes the last Phoenix out. This one probe is just bouncing around, checking out what's going on. Zila charges being researched. Another scan goes down. This time, the scan catches a glimpse of maybe the back toilet council. Does he see the toilet council? Yes, he does. Wow, these are really good timing for scans. Almost every scan is getting some sort of information. Three phoenixes out on, on the board for the Protoss player, AT and Sock. Someone's gotta really tell me if you pronounce the E in his name, because I don't want to call him Sock if he's Saki, and I don't want to call him Saki if he is Sock. I don't want to offend anybody, just so let me know the correct pronunciation. There's a proxy pylon here, along with another proxy pylon here, very good play, because you will be able to reinforce your units from potentially behind the Terran player if their Terran players are out in the middle of the field. So you don't want to be just be able to enforce your units from inside your base because everybody expects that, but if you have some proxy pylons placed throughout the map, that will give you a significant tactical advantage. There's four Phoenixes flying around, but they did not see these Vikings. But then Vikings do outrange the Phoenixes. And we see here what Lock Sock did is that he moved the Phoenix that was damaged to the back. So should they accidentally engage or should they engage with A attack for the Terran player, they will not hit that unit first. Shield regenerating for the Phoenix. This is very good. Very, very good usage of the Phoenix as they are continuously moving around the map, checking on what's going on. Infernal Preigniter going for the Hellions. Nice, very nice upgrade. And Oh, we see a Templar Archive going up. Phoenix is still flying around the map, and at this point, the Nexus is almost complete. Two assimilators going up, and the Terran player has just decided to expand himself. These Phoenix are just flying around, chilling, seeing what's going on. And they pick up one SCV and snipe it as it was building a bunker, pick up a Marine, and now they're going to try to take out this one Medivac. Will he be able to do it? No, he won't. These three Phoenixes deny this deny the snipe. The three phoenixes run away. Even though the vikings outrange the phoenix by two, I believe, the phoenix can actually fly faster and they can fly and attack, which makes them very useful. These destructible rocks going down for the Protoss player, as maybe he's thinking of getting another expansion. Orbital command is going down, and we see, ooh, psionic storm. Always nice to see some psionic storm. These destructible rocks are going down. If we take a look at the income tab, the Protoss player is a little bit ahead because he does have about 11 more probes than the Terran player has SCV, so it's always nice to have that extra little income to pad your army size or maybe get that little expansion a little bit earlier. This pylon is still there, very interesting. <laughs> and we see four Phoenixes. They might be able to snipe one. Viking? Nope. Actually, the Vikings take out the, one of the Phoenixes. The four Phoenixes is missing a buddy. Lost in combat. Oh, these these Hellions will upgrade. It's going to engage these Zealots, perhaps? Oh, no. The Phoenixes pick up the Hellions. These should be no problem for this bunch of ground units. We see the first High Templar being warped in, I believe. Additional Siege Tanks and Vikings. Siege tanks and Vikings are a very good mix because you can siege up the tanks, send the Vikings ahead, get vision, and then have the tanks pelt away at your opponents within range. So siege tank, Vikings, always a good combination for any Terran player. And this one Marine, very very valuable Marine, found found that pylon. It would have been very funny if <laughs> the Protoss player got a whole bunch of Zealots and rushed past this line of defense and got them into the mineral line and had these tanks hit the SCVs. That would have been a very good and useful strategy, I think. But I guess the Protoss player had something else on his mind. But that would have been very useful, as the siege tanks do do splash damage to their own units. 
and Zlots are a little bit more durable than SCVs. Protoss player supply block at the moment as he did not expect to lose that one proxy pylon <laughs> very close to the base of the Terran player. Oh, now we see the carriers are coming out for the Protoss player. Very interesting. He should really chrono boost these. As he does have. Oh, no, you know, he does not have that many chrono boosts. He does actually have some chrono boosts, actually. We see three. Vikings landing, being lured by this one probe to land. Maybe the Phoenix will be able to pick him off. Nope, the Phoenixes do not arrive in time. But I think they will be able to snipe one Viking. They snipe one Viking, are thinking about engaging a second, but he does not. This one Marine trying to chase down this one probe, but will be met with may potentially two. <laughs> two Zealots. This one Zealot got a hero kill against that Marine. We see a drop happening at the Protoss base. These three Hellions going in. They will spot... They will see these Protoss units, too. they will see two carriers, if you look here, you'll see the outline of the carriers coming out, before we saw the outline of the Phoenix. So right now, this should be no problem for the Protoss player, picking up the couple of Hellions that went by, I don't think they did any damage. Two additional carriers being produced, one Thor is coming out for the Terran player, Tari, and the Phoenix with their speed will be able to pick off that medevac. If we take a look at the income tab, we see a significant advantage for the Protoss player in terms of minerals, but he will be having a gas advantage soon as he's just decided to put in his probes into the gas line. A very formidable defense. That's why you never want to, you pretty much never want to engage a Terran head on because see, these siege tanks, look at their range. Very well covered all of the choke points one, two, and three, and as well as this one, but these are still up. The Rocks are still up, and this siege tank, I think he sees these two um, Zealots, and he does not like the fact that this one Zealot killed off his SCV friends, and he's going to try to take down these two Zealots, but no, he does not manage to get these two Zealots, because they do have one Protoss armor. Graviton Catapult coming out for the Protoss player, that would enable him to move his interceptors out of the carriers quicker. These three Phoenixes might be trying to get revenge for his Zealot friend, on this one tank, and he does, <laughs> he does pick up the tank. Will he be able to snipe it without the cost of one phoenix? This phoenix are moving, and they get to run away. This store is not fast enough. This one probe and this one SCV just hugging it out at the tower. Terran vehicles one upgrade going up, and this one Thor. What is the Thor doing? The Thor is just marching, going about his business, doing his little midnight stroll, and these two Zealots are saying, hello, you should not be going here, you do not enter. This one Thor has still not returned any fire, not a single shot. Tanks moving out. Will these two Zealots, oh man, these two Zealots took down the Thor. One Zealot took down the SCV, and one Zealot took down a Thor. Where have you ever heard of that story before? Yeah, and that rhymes. <laughs> and right now we see additional air weapon upgrade as, long, as well as Protoss Shield. Protoss Shield at this point is a good investment because even though it costs 200, 200 mineral gas, he has a quite a substantial number of ground units as well as air units. So it's very good to research this instead of the armor for them individually because it also gives your production buildings and buildings one shield. So it's very useful at this point. I don't think these oh, these three Hellions does see the other proxy pilot and is able to take it out. This one Zealot. I'm not sure if this one's the one that killed the SCV or the Thor. <laughs> it's, it's chipping away at that command center that's going up for the Terran player. Here we see quite a large battle. What is key in this battle is that he's got to keep these interceptors within range of the. Vikings and he should be good. He 